Okay, everyone. So uh, as you may remember from last time, the last thing we did was update our data source here um, using data from the FRED API, the Economic Data API, on year-over-year -year change in the Consumer Price Index. Um, we used Mr. Data, we downloaded it as a CSV, and we used Mr. Data Converter to convert it to a JSON uh, array, a set of JSON row arrays. Um, we pasted that into our, um, we modified our existing data source, right? Um, which was just, it's just handy, right? Because writing JSON can be difficult. There's no reason uh, to do it by hand if you don't have to. And so since we had kind of an object setup that was already working, um, you know, why not reuse that? Um, so having done that, we then took that JSON object, we copied and pasted it into our JSON lint feature just to make sure that everything was okay. And we got a, we got a valid JSON re uh, return value from JSON lint. So we know that we're all set with that, which is great. Um, so the second element of this uh, of this exercise is to look at creating a new type of visualization. Now, we've so far we've put a lot of work into developing the code that we have, um, and uh, you know we did that because we know that it's going to get a lot of mileage for us. And so back on the Google Code Playground, um, we can see that we have these options around uh, creating a line chart, right? Bar charts, line charts. Um, the occasional pie chart, these are going to be sort of your go-to visualizations most of the time. Um, there are a lot of other options over here and uh, you know we'll encourage you guys to explore those as appropriate. Um, but for now we're just going to look at you know this sort of basic transition. So um, as always we're going to go to our new favorite thing which is of course the documentation. So I can just click view docs here and it's going to bring me to um, the specific documentation for the line chart visualization. Um, and again one of the reasons why we use the Google visualizations is because there's a quick translation between uh, different types of visualizations. So if we look at the example uh, under this documentation, we see that there's a lot of similarities to uh, the version that we already use. In fact, it's almost identical, um, right down to the fact that it loads the same core charts packages that we loaded to do our, um, our bar chart visualization. So if you see here, we're we are all set with that. Um, and uh, the difference is that when it asks to generate the chart, it says new Google visualization line chart as opposed to new Google visualization bar chart, right? So in theory, to convert this from a bar chart to a line chart, that's all I have to do. Um, and in fact, I could do this, uh, I could have done this with the original data set to start, and I encourage you guys to experiment with that, see what happens. Might be kind of a mess, not really sure. Um, but there's something else that changed here as well, and that was the format of our data. So whereas previously we had these JSON objects that we had to loop through manually, um, our data set is now actually an array already. Um, and so we have some more flexibility in, um, in how we represent it. Now, uh, first of all, I want to point out that obviously this is not, uh, that this is a date, not a state, uh, right? So when we add our column, we still have two columns of data, um, but obviously, let's put this down as month, right? Because that's actually a month descriptor. And the number is actually uh, CPI percent change, right? So this is where we start to see uh, why titles are important and we'll look at customizing the keys and things like that uh, soon. But I want to make sure that I change all of these elements so that uh, I have a clear picture of, of what I'm sort of getting here. Now in this case, what I'm going to do is um, we have this whole sort of split and I'm still calling it guardian data here, guardian table. So again, all I'm going to do is change this. Actually, I'm going to call it CPI table. So I'm going to change these variable names. In fact, I could do a find and replace. Oops. So if I do a find, I could say find guardian table. Oops, that didn't work. Oh, uh, sorry, that was. I can put my replace text here, and that's going to be CPI table. Right? So now I've gone ahead and, oops, it missed one there, not sure why. 
Okay, but you know I can use a find and replace so that again so that my um, so that my variable names match the concept of what I'm of what I'm visualizing. Right, this is very valuable as I think many of you have seen by now. Um, so I've added this column. I've added my tool tip here. Um, except I'm not going to do the tool tip yet, and the reason why is that I want to see what happens when I I want to see how I can actually engage this. Uh, without having to loop through everything because I already have these, this array of information. So I'm going to go ahead and use a multi-line comment here to gray out my entire for loop. And instead of, um, and so instead of doing that loop at this moment, uh, what I'm going to do is say, hey, okay, well, I've, I know I've got my data already. Um, my data is actually this up top. I'm going to say, uh, I'm going to keep, I'm going to create a new row data, right? And in this case, my row data is actually going to be my data source. So again, I'm going to change this from guardian data to CPI data. I'm going to console log that CPI data. Um, and I'm going to say that my row data is going to be CPI data dot, well, dot CPI data. <laughs> I gave them the same name. I guess that's not terribly surprising, right? Because if I look at the format of CPI data, it is an array of arrays, right? So I just want to clarify that the thing that's important here is that I need to have an array of arrays. And whether I get that by constructing it using a for loop from a, a differently structured JSON object, or whether I, in this case, uh, have it as kind of the original data structure doesn't really matter, right? I just need to get to that array of arrays. Now, now that I have row data set up there, well, my CPI table dot add rows row data works very well. And um, oops, I missed another CPI table here. That find and replace doesn't seem hugely reliable. Um, I don't know. I should be able to actually just do this. Now, I want to change my title and say CPI data year over year, right? Vertical axis, well, let's just see what happens for now, right? I'm going to take the red off of that and we'll see what goes, right? So, you know, we, we've looked at a very, one example very, very meticulously and very closely. And now what we want you guys to get comfortable with is this idea of exploring and experimenting and kind of testing out around the edges of the things that you already know how to do. Um, so here we go. Um, I'm going to go ahead and actually for now I'm just going to do a quick um, FileZilla, right? Going to connect to Columbia. Go ahead as we've done in the past and create a new directory, which is going to be my um, uh, line, line charts, right? And right, take this, generate a new connection in Aptana. I have this memorized by now. Password, path, click OK. Hopefully everything goes through. Apply. Oh darn it, didn't quite get there, did I? It's not going to let me go into line charts. All right. Um, mm -hmm. All right. Well, for now, let's just I'll just do it through FileZilla because I'm feeling lazy. Um, this is a completely different set of stuff, right? So I go here. Okay. So here's Google Viz new. Here's my line charts folder. And of course, we're going to update, upload all of this. 
Okay, so now with any luck, I should see something that looks like a line chart. And, you know, if I don't see something that looks like a line chart, we'll debug it, because that's what we do. We're just crazy debugging people. So, here we are. Back up here, I've left a bunch of kind of weird customizations in there. And you know what? Doesn't look half bad, right? Um, kind of an interesting data set. We see the CPI actually dropped. Right? What does it mean when the consumer price index, uh, the consumer price, price index is uh, essentially commensurate with inflation? Um, means that we actually had deflation for a while, which, for the record, not a good thing, even though people always worry about inflation. Um, and you can see, like, right off the bat here, we, we did very little work, but we completely changed our data source, we changed our, um, our visualization format, and we were able to create this... Um, you know, completely separate visualization. Again, could use some stylistic help, um, but but really has promise. Um, so we're just going to take one uh, one small extra step in the next video, and we're going to look at. Um, even though a lot of the um, customization features are shared among the visualizations, um, some of them have features that others don't. One of them that I just want to highlight for the line chart um, that works for a couple of other ones as well is the static annotation feature, which is a really powerful feature um, and goes to the heart of what a lot of you guys were talking about in your redesigns of this uh, being able to have static contextual information on things like line charts and timelines, both of which are supported by Google visualizations. So we're going to take a quick look that it doesn't work on bar charts so this is a good uh, a good test case um, so we'll see you in another couple of minutes and we'll look at doing some more custom we'll do some more custom tool tips and also of course um, we will look at annotations all right see you in a moment